I've got worms. They quietly work their magic day and night right under our very feet. They're the champs of soil restoration. Their labor benefits the food we eat, the flowers we love, and the trees that shade us. Aristotle actually called them the intestines of the earth. Join me today as we learn all about the earthworm. An earthworm is a terrestrial invertebrate which means it doesn't have a backbone. It doesn't have any bones, actually. These terrestrial worms dwell in soil and moist leaf litter. As they burrow, they consume soil, absorbing nutrients from decomposing organic matter like leaves or roots. They dig tiny channels to make holes that aerate the soil and improve drainage. An earthworm can eat up to about a third of its body weight in a day. Their natural feeding habits mean that small amounts of soil pass through their bodies and, surprisingly, when they excrete it, is in better condition. The earthworm belongs to the phylum Annelida. Annelida in Latin means little rings. The body of the earthworm is segmented, which looks like many little rings joined or fused together. The earthworm is made of about 100 to 150 of these segments. For movement, two sets of muscles come into play. Circular muscles that surround each body segment and long muscles or longitudinal muscles that run the length of the body. Each segment or section has bristles called setae. These setae help anchor and control the worm when it moves through soil. The bristles or setae anchor one section of the earthworm firmly into the ground while the other part of the body protrudes forward. The earthworm moves kind of like this toy. It uses some segments to contract while at the same time lengthening others. This propels the earthworm forward in the soil. If each segment moved together instead of independently, the earthworm would remain stationary, kind of like this. He's not going anywhere. Slime is prime, except for the yuck factor. Slime is harmless, and for the earthworm, it's essential. Produced by a thick ring of glandular tissue called the clitellum, it's a mucus essential for its role in keeping them moist. There are several reasons why moisture is crucial, but first and foremost, they need it for breathing. Oxygen enters directly into their bloodstream through tiny pores in their thin skin after dissolving in the mucus. Slimy skin also serves as a lubricant to help ease the worm through the soil, and it forms a cocoon that holds their embryos. If an earthworm dries, it dies. The digestive system is partitioned into many regions. Food, such as soil, enters the earthworm's mouth and then is swallowed by the pharynx then moves through the esophagus and into the crop, where it is stored and then eventually into the gizzard. The gizzard uses sand and tiny stones the earthworm consumed to grind the food completely. Aortic arches function like a human heart. There are five pairs of aortic arches right here, which have the responsibility of pumping blood into the dorsal and ventral Vessels, sending blood to the front and back of the worm's body. Earthworms can detect light, even though they cannot see. Tissue located at the earthworm's head is sensitive to light and helps it not to surface during the daytime where it could dry out or get eaten by predators. Predators include snakes, birds, toads, rodents, moles, foxes, certain beetles, um, slugs, and humans, us, that's right. Humans eat earthworms. I don't, that would be really gross, but we also kill them in other ways because you may have heard that chopping an earthworm in two will then produce two earthworms. Well, that isn't true. The front part may survive if it has the clitellum and at least 10 segments left. When this happens, it will regrow a body, but it is much smaller in diameter. The back end always dies. Earthworms contain both male and female reproductive organs, here and here, but they still need another earthworm to mate with. After mating, both earthworms have fertilized eggs that are then covered in a slime tube that eventually forms an egg cocoon and is deposited into the soil. 
Miniature earthworms emerge from that cocoon after two to four weeks. These guys are going to be put to good use. I'm going to add them to my vermicompost bins. You can compost this way too and be team earthworm. To learn more about vermicomposting, you can check out this video.